PTFE grinding your prints to a halt. Hot ends where the nozzle comes out, but not in the way that you're expecting. And it's never wet filament until it actually is. All this and more, Print Fix Friday, episode 91. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, you like this kind of thing, don't forget to leave a like and get subscribed. Greatly appreciate it. This episode is completely filmed without an internet connection by just tethering my cell phone. In fact, I am filming the intro after the video has been filmed. Stay tuned, cause it's great, trust me. And there are some awesome failures coming at you guys. Remember, if you do wanna get your fails looked at by myself, and the team at 3D Musketeers, you can do so by submitting them to us. Email them to me, youtube at 3dmusketeers.com, or tag us on all the social media platforms that you are a part of, particularly I look at Twitter all the time. It's where a lot of the industry hangs out, and one of the few social medias that I 100% run myself. We have the team that runs a lot of the others, especially TikTok. I don't even know our login for TikTok. But I would love to help you guys out and get better prints. So reach out to us. We don't charge for it. It's just something that I love to do to help give back to the community that is really made all of this possible. Anyways, no sponsor this week because uh, I get pretty mad about having to use my phone for internet and uh, that's not very sponsor friendly. So let's get into fixing some fails. <laughs> First up, a fail from my buddy Metalhead Printing. They've got an interesting issue with their CR6 SE. As you can see here, the PTFE tube is kind of worn down and that's quite a bit worn down. They were fighting failures over and over and over. The big thing was that the prints weren't being structurally sound. There's your problem. You got a little bit of excess drag there going on. Remember, with printers with PTFE lined hot ends, and the CR6 SE is one of them, you need to periodically check your PTFE. And really, any printer that is running a PTFE tube, whether that is for a Bowden tube or something like the Bamboo, which has quite a few that go into the AMS, out of the AMS, into the machine, and then even from the entrance on the rear of the machine to the hot end, there's Bowden tubes everywhere. Even regular PLA is abrasive. You see, we're actually printing from a Bowden tube behind me. We're using that as a reverse Bowden system from a dryer where we're printing carbon fiber polycarbonate for a client. And in a case like this, where you are running a PTFE lined hot and it is something to keep an idea of and kind of a grasp on pretty reliably you want to be changing this stuff often in fact if you are doing this as a content creator or someone that wants to do this stuff more professionally i do recommend that you change out that bowden tube or ptfe tubing in your non all metal hot end once every couple of months or generally once every five to seven kilograms which might sound like a lot and is likely more than you actually need but i'd rather you change it out more often than you need than have you get stuck dealing with really random failures that don't make a ton of sense. It is something that is often overlooked and something that I've overlooked plenty of times. And in fact, Allison from our Discord was going through a similar issue with her Prusa Mark 3S where it was just clicking and clicking and clicking and it wasn't pushing filament out. She had done really nothing to modify and I said, hey, check that Bowden tube in the printer. And the Mark 3S has an all metal hot end, but it uses a short piece of PTFE to help guide the filament into the hot end. So far, it looks like that might have actually been the problem. And as the material gets worn away, it is a item that needs to be replaced. That's why we do recommend having spares. And at least when it comes to Prusa's, you can just buy regular PTFE tubing, then go ahead and print out the cutter for it and then remount the ends yourself. We actually recommend like a 60 degree V-bit. We'll link to some in the description down below. And I happen to have some relatively handy that uh, enable us to do that. This is also great if you're using any hobby mills. Maybe soon, TM. I used to have an X-Carb, but we sold it. So that's well before the channel. But if you do want to see some hobby milling on the channel, let me know. We'll see if we can get some stuff going because open build is actually located really close to me now they actually moved right into pretty much our backyard so we'll have to go over there and take a look let me know if you want to see that in those comments this is probably one of the most unique bamboo failures that i've ever seen this came from our social media post for last week's print fix friday where i talked a lot about my bamboo issues where i am still running a zero percent success rate now i would be running the bamboo more but we currently don't have any internet and haven't had internet for uh a while thanks spectrum 
And because of that, I can't upload anything to Bamboo. So we're just kind of waiting for stuff. And no, I'm not uploading log files. I'm smarter than that. Anyways, we got this, uh, this failure here. This person's name is Ajax. And they said, well, guess I have to take back everything I said. Just had this happen this morning. Hope Bamboo Global can help me replace these damaged parts. Interestingly, the machine actually detected the failure, which is pretty cool. I can dig that. But I am really curious as to how this happened. So we really didn't know how the Bamboo Hanen was assembled, but now we definitely know the tip is pressed in. And from the looks of it, uh, it's not staked at all. Normally when you do a press fitting of some sort, especially for something like this, you would want to have some sort of a staking in it so it doesn't come out. Whether it is like ribbing on a nail, for her pleasure of course, or something of the sort, you would expect something. Unfortunately, this, I believe this is the engineering plate, is uh, well, rip. Just straight. We can see with the further photo, it's actually a pretty clean push. And that is literally a first for me. Out of all the really odd bamboo failures that we've seen, this one has to take the cake. I have never seen this before, and I generally wouldn't see this very often, I don't think. In my mind, there's only a few ways this happens. One, you have a serious clog, and your filament does not slip and you basically build up hydraulic pressure enough to push that out i firmly don't think that's possible what i believe here has occurred is that over time dissimilar metals have worked their way loose because there isn't a way to keep those two pieces from coming apart so dissimilar metals mean that you will get uneven thermal expansion and contraction which can theoretically cause this now is that at a temperature extreme i don't know I didn't get too much information about this and I wanted to. We've been having major internet issues for the past five days. In fact, I'm on what? This is nine or 10 hours without internet in a row. We had to just film with a Wi Fi hotspot from my phone. Anyways, looking here, the nozzle actually looks pretty clean and Ajax obviously cleaned it up a little bit. And that's good because we do want to see what could possibly be it. Now I see some dots of filament here and I'm not exactly certain if that has something to do with the filament itself or if that's just a little bit of schmoo that was left or maybe that was from a pair of pliers or something. I've just never seen a failure like this and I would love to know what you guys think because really it's a thermal expansion thing or a hydraulic thing in my opinion so that one is certainly interesting sucks about the engineering plate but hey that is the way that it goes and to those of you that have sent over 3mf files for me to try out and see how they go thank you i greatly appreciate you guys trying to help out where you can and obviously help me prove that it is not the bed i think we're finally past that Finally, this one comes from a new supporter in our Patreon Discord, Man of the Sky, who has been dealing with some Prusa Mini stringing issues. And you might say, it's wet filament. It's not wet filament. You'll see wet filament toward the end of the video. Don't worry, stay tuned, it's coming. This is a Prusa Mini Plus, obviously. It's Isun PLA with a 0.25 millimeter nozzle, layer height of 0.1, Nozzle temp of 205C, bed temp of 60C, with random seams, and all other settings are stock in Preciser. So taking a look at this thing, it's not bad, but she's got a case of the strings. This is a relatively easy thing to fix if you wanted to. You could easily go in, hit it with a blowtorch, clean it with a knife, and you're done. If you guys want to see how to clean up prints like this, let me know. We can do a video on it where we deal with the it's already printed we have to make it look pretty and then we can do the second half of the video being okay well how do we fix it in our print settings if you guys want to see that let me know that might be a future episode after we pass episode 100 or 104 for print fix friday so something to note about these parts these are uh, like little flyer toys they've got extra perimeters right here at those edging and i think that's what we're seeing we're seeing it go to that little perimeter move over do another one do another one then it's doing the extra perimeters i said i want you to first turn off random seams the random seams could be doing a lot of this movement which is causing some of the problems from there it is either something to do with your seams or it is a connection point or something to do with retraction man of the sky sent over their settings i took a look at this on my phone of course and said 
huh, I don't like that. 70% is way too high. I said, cut that back to 25%, remove retract on layer change and give that a shot. And for good measure, I said, increase your Z hop to 0.4. Better to have extra and not collide with your part than risk it. I don't know. As we can see, they were dealing with definite issues with retraction. Further down on the part, not enough restart. And because you're doing this every single layer as the original setting had it, Every single time you go up a new layer, you're retracting, which is not necessary in most cases. If you do have a long Bowden system, you can benefit from it, but I don't find it to be all that useful all the time. This is uh, no bueno, another view of it there. But after the settings changes that we did, she's looking pretty good. Also, put a sock on it. I know Prusha doesn't do it, but seriously, it's worth it. Put a sock on it. I think it helps out a lot. We can see that the issue of the outer perimeter not connecting to itself is gone, but we still have a Z seam issue. So we can still see a pretty serious Z seam throughout. I had him also change to uh, nearest instead of random. I think we might go to aligned to make removing the Z seam just a little bit easier to do. In this case, you can start creeping up on your wipe distance for how much you want to wipe before the retract. That can help kind of smooth those lines together and not have such an obvious level of a Z seam. This is better. This can be sanded and certainly better than what we were looking at previously, but it is still something that can use some work. This is the part that I love about 3D printing though. We changed a couple of settings based on knowledge and experience. We saw legitimate real world results, and now we can start creeping up on getting that perfect print. That is what this is about. This is what this series is about. And remember, of course, if you are having issues like this, you can submit them to us. Links, everything in that description down below. Please don't hesitate to reach out to us. I love taking a look at issues that our fans are having and how we might be able to help you guys. And if you do want to get help immediately, go join our Discord. There is an option for that as well. I've said it once, I've said it twice, and if I say it one more time, I'm expecting Lionel Richie to show up. Socks on your printers save you headaches. We got a bamboo X1 carbon here with maybe a PEI sheet on it. I'm always looking to now see if people are running aftermarket plates or not, okay? This one here has got a bit of a blob of doom. And while we did get some around the hot end there, most of it was captured by the sock. And once it all cools down, you should actually be able to peel it off the sock. And if you're still having issues getting that filament off the sock, just heat it up with a hot air gun. The sock is made of silicone. It won't care as long as it doesn't get too crazy hot. So of course, don't hit it with a blowtorch, but you know, a little bit can go a long way. As for cleaning off the Honda itself, we've talked about it before, but the brass firearm cleaning brushes that are on a little bit of a stick are phenomenal for this because they normally have one side with longer bristles and one side with very small bristles that are not exactly designed for this method, but actually work really, really well. We'll link some in that description if you guys are looking to get some. And in this case, I think they'd be perfect. You can also look at using some needle nose pliers or some snips if you are, you know, particularly talented and not going to cut any wires. That sucks. Ugh. So go ahead and clean off the block or even an exacto knife or some sort of hobby knife would work as well. Although not necessary, obviously. I'm glad that printers come with socks though. And printers that don't come with them, I always recommend that people add them. It is cheap insurance. And often, even if it envelops the sock, you can heat up the printer enough to where the entire sock plus most of the blob will fall off leaving you with a significantly smaller issue to deal with. The only downside to socks is that some socks can come loose during a print if they're not installed properly, creating a print failure because the sock itself fell. In my opinion, those issues are much less likely to occur than a blob of doom creating massive problems on your prints. So great assault that one. I use them on all of our printers. Let me know if you guys do too. Next up, a fail from the Elegoo Discord, this time from Mrs. Geek Tech, a friend of the channel who's got some strings here. And I am normally the first person to say it's not wet filament, but in this particular instance, it might actually be wet filament. I know, I know, Grant, it's even white filament. I know, but I do believe it's wet. 
here's why. It's not a really high quality photo, so we're kind of working with what we got here. But looking at this edge right here, we can see a lot of surface defects on the part. That is often indicative of the little bubbles of air that are created when the water is instantly vaporized and boiled in the hot end, basically creating a little bit of an air pop in your print surface. Now, it can vary quite a bit between tons of Rice Krispies or a pop and hiss every now and then, but it is normally characterized by lots of stringing that we see here. If you believe that your filament may be wet, even if you're wrong, drying it is generally not going to hurt it as long as you maintain the temperatures correctly. For PLA, don't go above 60C if you can avoid it. If you go above 65C, the roll will basically melt and you've wasted your time. For PETG, we run 65 to 70 degrees centigrade. And for nylons and polycarbonates, as hot as your generic dryers will go, so 70C, you will see after a couple of hours, a night and day difference between it. Now, if this isn't for some reason a wet filament issue, I, I, I think... It is, but if for some reason it isn't a wet filament issue, this would then lead me to look at retraction. We do have some issues here with just bad extrusion. So if we're not retracting enough or we're retracting too fast and creating some back pressure in the hot end, you could see that. Now, this could be a combination of a couple of things. I don't know anything about the printer, and this is actually submitted by Chris Catlett, a fan and patron of the channel, and we don't know too much else other than the photos that we see. Looking off what I got, I'm checking potentially for some wet filament here, and with how bad the stringing is and how good the rest of the part looks, I'm pushing toward wet filament. But I would also check those retraction settings to make sure that everything is copacetic. But that is all I have for you guys today on the first episode of Print Fix Friday where I actually don't have internet. Wait, do I actually have it? Is my internet back now? Did my internet come back as we're on here? Hold on, I think it might have. <gasps> I got internet mofos! That's all I have for you guys today on this uh, phone-powered episode of Print Fix Friday. Let me know what you guys think of these fails down in those comments below. But stay safe out there. Don't forget to call your loved ones. And as always, keep making awesome. Have a good one. I love how right at the end of the video, I realized that we got our internet back. Thank you guys for hanging out. And uh, this one's for you, Spectrum. I have had two and a half no two and a half hours all day of internet and i pay over or close to a hundred dollars a month anyways thank you guys so much for watching this video and a massive thank goes out to all of our patreon paypal and youtube channel member supporters whose names are listed right next to me at the five dollar tier and higher remember if you want to support the channel what we do here financially you can do so in those links in that description down below right below me will be the entire print fix friday series where you can take a look at some of the fails that we've looked at and how we solve them sometimes i'm right most of the time i'm right and a couple of those times i've been wrong those are my favorite ones though i love when i get something wrong and we get to have back and forth with other people in the comments right next to that will be last week's print fix friday i'm still dealing with those bamboo issues i will see you guys down in those comments and in the next one take care